Game, record, and stream without compromise on Intel Core i7.
towards Bustle. It's a double kill for Blizzard while Paddling is on the run. Signify are on the cusp of gaining victory here. Trying to get the bomb down, Munchman has no idea, he's going to find an ace, he's going to find a kill, and get the second one as well. Everybody, welcome to the SL India Premiership Winter Season Phase 2. It's getting pretty cold here in Gurgaon, in Delhi, where in the SL India Premiership, the heat is about to increase some more. Today, we have about two games for you folks. We're going to have Clash Royale and Dora 2. This event is brought to you by my HP's IOBenQ, HyperX, and Tel, and organized by Nordwind Gaming. In Clash Royale, today, we're going to have Mukul, who's going to go up against the Shield. Now, Mukul and Sushil both have been playing this game from 2016. They entered the ASL India Premiership in the summer season. Mukul even made his way through the Challenger League to the Masters League, but in the fall season, he wasn't able to attend the fall season finale, which took him back into the Challenger League. Over the there he's again worked his way up and now he's back into the Masters League in the winter season and is hoping to make his place much stronger there. Today he goes up against Sushil who is from Delhi. He's been playing the game for quite a while. He also entered the ESL India Premiership League in the summer season. He had a decent performance there and even entered the fall season finale that happened in Hyderabad. But over there he got knocked out in the quarterfinals and had to head back home. But in the winter season he, in phase one he will manage to in the second position and now he's looking to keep that position stronger or even come in first so let's see how this game is going to go as we head into it with our cast member at super gola and i will see you all after that Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the East India Premiership. And uh, I guess I'm glad to be back as well. Like the last few days, our uh, head of production, Kunal, knocking on heaven's door, I would assume. <laughs> I know he's laughing at the PCR right now, but it's no laughing matter, ladies and gentlemen. If you fall sick, you need to get better. Otherwise, people around you will suffer like I had to for the past few days running production and not having the fun to cast these actual Clash Royale games. But all that is in the past now, and I'm back. And this is the ESL India Premiership's first uh, game of the day, which is going to be Abhi versus 8 bit I Mukul. Mukul has started off with a 3 Musketeer deck with an Elixir character. 
Well, Abhi is playing a fast uh, hog cycle. It's poison. Oh, that's that's pretty interesting, and it's very rare to see uh, people using single musketeers in their decks because each musketeer is four elixir, which makes two musketeers eight elixir. But for nine elixir, you get uh, three musketeers. I guess it's such a good trade up that uh, he just got the first tower within the uh, within like two minutes, a minute fifty five, if I'm not wrong in trouble right now like he's lost the first hour so early in the game and once uh, you enter into the last minute uh, which is double exit time Mukul's deck is only going to get much 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 stronger being able to bounce elixir off of both maybe two collectors at once the battle on the right though looks like uh, Mukul's time turned to be in some trouble right there 1171 HP left on his star but uh, you know, it's still alive. That's all that matters. He has a minute, 10 seconds to keep it that way or maybe take more towers if... Uh, two elixir characters down, this is going to be one hell of a... using musketeers, I would, I would assume. Poison uh, being placed well by Abi, hitting both the tower as well as the elixir character. But now he has to deal with this uh, tiny, tiny, aggressive three musketeer drop right there. Ooh. In front of it, just to save the musketeers from a lot of damage. But Abi handled it as well as he could. He lost a bunch of HP of, of his own tower. Now it's at 13-34. Uh, but, I mean, what else can he do, right? He, he did the best he could with the tools he had, but... He still has to bring down Mukul's own tower, which is at 139 HP if he wants any chance of survival, but I don't see it happening. I mean, even if he brings the tower down, I think uh, Abhi is going to lose his tower pretty quickly. So, not sure how much more of an effort he can give in. So, another log from Abhi would clear the musketeers on the right, but uh, this uh, hacking away at it. And with the bats, I'm sure he'll be able to get... Uh, Oh, look at that. Crown Tower itself is bringing is being brought down by the Musketeer. 68 HP. All he needs is one hit. Yep, <laughs> look at that. Yeah, if this was normal time, uh, Mukul would have won this first uh, game of this matchup with a 3-0 crown victory thanks to the double dash coming out from the Bandit. But uh, since this is overtime, we're going to stop at two crowns. So congratulations, Mukul, for opening up uh, today's scoreboard with a very, very decisive and quite uh, powerful victory right there. Three of, uh, he managed to drop the three musketeers offensively twice, you know, thanks to Sushil's uh, lack of tools. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to call it. Well, uh, let's see if uh, Sushil responds in kind in the second match, if it's uh, ready. Bring another competent pr uh, producer right there. Kunal, just let's let's just do a mental high five. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so Abhi is uh, modified his deck a little. Looks like it's uh, and again a hog based deck with the Mega Knight. And while Mukul's not changed anything, like it's the same exact deck, I would assume. Exact deck. Again, uh, both the players sort of had a staring contest for the first 30 seconds of the game, not playing any cards. I think we are going to see the first three musketeers come out from Mukul again, as a response to the hog push on the right. I don't know, I think it's they weren't placed that well, look at that. Wrecked Mukul's uh, elixir right there. Like, Not only did he uh, manage to get quite a bit of damage onto Mukul's star, using his hog but he also thanks that well well placed poison completely nullified mukul's musketeers he, like they didn't even make it halfway past they just died right there the hog on the right getting one more hit off onto the tower like those little chip damage even though you may think that ah it only hit it once not much damage 
every single time that he lets go of the hog if he actually manages to make it to the tower and hit it once it's worth it and if it hits uh, twice it's even better like if you let a hog go unchallenged he'll basically just destroy the tower since these are equalized levels and the hog is always uh, level, level 7 that is since it's a rare card see 1 2 and then 3 and look at the look at the HP of the tower. It's not just the fact that it moves so quickly, it's also the fact that it does it it chunks the tower when it hits it. The laser dragon or the inferno dragon as it's supposed to be called. Vocal star is at 48 HP, and we see finally that so Shiel is on the offensive. He's he's pushing, he's pressuring uh, Mukul. Looks like the change that he made his uh, made to his deck has worked out. Tyson again right there completely killed the uh, uh, the musketeers as well as uh, as well as finishing the elixir character off. That's a two for one whammy right there. Dropped by Mukul onto the back lines, which uh, gets destroyed by the Inferno Dragon, and uh, Abhi finally has let go of his Mega Knight and he has wrecked havoc. Push Mukul was building, like nothing. Like he just stopped the push right there. They, Nothing went past the Mega Knight. And he did that uh, last jump just as a show off. Congratulations to Sushil. That is a very well thought out change to his deck. Like it worked out beautifully. Like didn't let uh, Mukul push any uh, any more than the first uh, thing that he left led by. And that too, because it was a minor, he was able to chip some damage off onto the tower. But again, very well played by uh, Sushil right there. Counterplay, good counter picking to borrow terms from other esports. This I like the scoreline one one. Uh, it this definitely I mean this actually means that uh, the players are sort of uh, well matched against each other, and uh, we are going to see some spectacular play like those last millisecond rockets that destroy towers and uh, other uh, you know fun stuff. Mukul's now playing a chip damage deck, like I said, the rocket and the goblin barrel. And uh, looks like Abhi has decided to play the same exact deck. The players are coordinating right now, look at that. Two knights in the middle, goblin barrel being thrown. Princess uh, now going to destroy the push completely on the right and in turn get destroyed by the other princess. See, see, look at that. All of them died. See, th this, this should teach uh, everybody right there. Like, nobody wins in a war. <laughs> there is no winning. Okay. The game has sort of slowed down. Trying to figure out uh, better ways to out cycle each other, out think each other, like they have the same exact decks. Almost literally the same exact decks. How do they outplay each other? Like these guys are both in the master, so any idea that uh, Mukul may get, Sushil will also get. How do they decide uh, what idea that the, their opponent may get? Like, they, I don't know how they're going to figure this out. This might actually end up in a draw have to wait for somebody to make a mistake oh good attempt by mukul there to pull using the tornado to pull the goblins to activate his star but unfortunately it didn't happen abhi a little bit of a lead in elixir just a little bit just a tiny bit like one elixir or two elixir but uh, i said that into a successful tower push i see i doubt it though like, look at that point and then replies to the battles which is the log logs are on point they even managed to make the princesses kill each other with strategic placements of the ice pit again we're gonna see another log oh mistake number two coming out from mukul there he actually let the barrel hit the one of the goblins from the barrel hit the tower i don't know you can't successfully i mean you can't Precisely do every single. 
like you're supposed to since this is the masters and thanks to those tiny little indiscretions for coming from mukul his tower on the right is at 1374 hp be an advantage to abhi we can we'll just have to wait and see if uh, he can actually pull something off key barrel placement coming off from mukul right there but uh, abhi has responded with a goblin gang of his own oof that rocket bringing it down to 881 hp now all he has to do is keep going at it keep defending get that little bit of elixir lead and use another rocket and then do the same thing all over again rocket and then we are going to have a victory oh look at that mukul coming out with a rocket barrel combo he finally using the tornado to his advantage to activate his own king tar but thanks to the rocket and the barrel and abhi's decision to sacrifice hp on the tar it's at 1074 or 1074 so good now both the players are in, uh, are, are in danger i would say or mukul star is lower but uh, there we go one more rocket coming out leaving it at 152 hp one more hit off from a barrel that would do it we expected mukul to throw the barrel as well with uh, all right there we go rocket coming off from abi destroys the tower and uh, gives us the result of the third match so sushil wins it 2-1 in favor of sushil right now but for oh, that that was that mirror match like that was an insanely match up and uh, looks like uh, mukul made a couple of mistakes in the beginning over there and so she'll just uh, capitalized on them started spamming his not spamming started utilizing his rockets in a very effective manner he had to use i think four rockets to finish off the tar but he won so gg but before we head off into the next match though i just want to take a moment of your uh, of the audience's time just to remind them how the esl india premiership you know is possible no we have a lot of people to thank the most important of which are hp zoi by benq hyperx and uh, the new addition to our family intel and of course all of this is being uh, produced broadcasted brought to you by nordwin gaming that's that's me and my family right there i guess that's all i wanted to say i think we can head off into game number 4 So this might be the last game of today because this is a best of five, and uh, Sushil is already at two victories. If he wins this, uh, I can we can call, uh, call it quits for today. But uh, Mukul wins this one. If Mukul wins this match, we're gonna go into game five, and game five, uh, game fives is and the plural of if it eludes me right now. So matchup is always exciting because. usually these but these players are a little lazy and they only plan for uh, 3031 uh, like they have to they may have to come up with something on the spot and uh, it's fun to see that happen see the magnite chasing the uh, ice golem but uh, the musketeer just went a little too far ahead to, uh, and wasn't safe from the tar <laughs> Abhi's hog just sneakily makes it way makes its way past uh, the cannon after destroying it and gets off a couple of hits off the tar, bringing it to 2006 HP. And it looks like Abhi's uh, on the lead both elixir and uh, tar HP wise. You see Mukul responding with a hog of his own. Immediately gets answered by this huge, huge, huge. insane person dropping out from the sky dealing a splash damage all around him of 500 most units and then as if that wasn't enough he knocks them back back you shall not pass that's what he says uh and and not just that he not only destroyed a bunch of mukul's units he actually destroyed the cannon as well and tanked quite a bit of damage from the tar and the musketeer to save his hog the trouble thanks to which the hog actually managed to make it to the tar and do again more hits onto the tar this this hog right there uh, from mukul that that's mvp look look at it he it just reaches the tar three or four hits 
Tar is at 1382. Another Hawk coming out from Abi gets distracted by the cannon. Poison pretty much kills it. Again, Mukul's Hog, MVP. Look at that. Two hits off onto the Tar. Even going through so many enemy units like bats, goblins, ice golem. Still managed to reach the Tar. Still managed to get two hits off it. Like one hit is good enough and then two hits. That's... That's next level. Okay. Another uh, Mega Knight coming out from Abi. How much value he can claim from uh, Mukul? I'm guessing not much. Like he's right now chasing after an Ice Golem. One mana, uh, sorry, two Elixir. Ka... Really worth it. Is he going to be able to make it to the tower? No, he doesn't. Thanks to the Ice Spirit freezing him in place, the just tower just completely destroys him. And now we're going to see the Hog make it to the tower and get. Three hits off? No, only two hits. Left, uh, that's... Uh... So, Abhi's star is at 328 HP, which is not in range of Mukul's fireball, but uh, Mukul's star is at 269 in range of Abhi's po uh, poison, because Abhi also has a zap. See what happens first. Oh, there we go. Log coming out from Mukul. I can... We can... Is it enough? Is it enough? Yes, it is! Whoa, look at that! Maybe a uh, hundred milliseconds uh, late and uh, Mukul star would have been destroyed by the poison. But no. Very well, like, use the fireball as soon as he got it in face. Any time, didn't want to do the deal with it moment with his sunglasses. Although he already has sunglasses in this picture. And when he did, tying the score 2-2-2 two, 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 to all. 2 to 2, 2 to 2 sounds funny. 2 all, 2 each. Mukul versus Abhi, Sushil Abhi Shah. So, again, like I said, game 5. Very exciting. Final game of the day, unless this is a draw, of course. Unless this is a draw. And it looks like Mukul has shifted to a graveyard poison deck with a knight and a nice golem kickers. While Abhi has uh, decided to stick with the same deck that won him the last game. Game. Yeah, that lost him the last game. My mistake. I apologize. I sometimes find funny, right? Uh, maybe Abhi expected Mukul to shift to a deck that is weak to the deck that he just used. That's not how esports works, does it? One from the other players in the Masters. Let's see. Who's who's right now in the lead? Like, I've managed to clip off a bit of uh, HP from uh, Abhi's tower, but it's very early in the game. It's not even been a minute and a half. If uh, that's good enough, so he uses a naked poison for some reason. Chunk a bit of HP off the tower and kill the bats, but uh, that's all it managed to do. Like. I'm sure in his eyes it was worth it, but um, we'll have to wait until the end of the game to see if it was actually worth it. To cycle back to the graveyard poison and use it at once. And see what happens. And poison is gonna come out soon. Yes, it does. Abhi <laughs> replies with a Mega Knight. With a not so effective Mega Knight. Look at that. Those skellies just uh, managed to reach the tower and damage to it, bringing it down to 594 while this ice golem just managed to reach the tower and put all over it. It's, it's a it's a snowman then blew up showering it with snow S slowing it down because it's cold that's it. Kusnevo. Things left, I think uh, Mukul is going to start playing it safe. Start uh, chunking the tar in very, very, very cost-effective ways just to prevent Abhi from making any moves uh, to bring him down. So 498 HP left. And he uses the poison defensively. <laughs> the Baganite just died in mid-air. <laughs> Graveyard Poison, I think we can call call this in favor of Mukul right there. 268 HP, 238. 
जी 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 कंग्रेचुलेशन मुकुल यू वर डाउन इन द बिगिनिंग आफ्टर लाइक टू थ्री गेम्स बट यू मैन कम बैक थ्री टू कंग्रेचुलेशन दैट फायर बॉल लॉग एंड जैप कॉम्पो दैट वॉज दैट वॉज वेल टाइम just enough uh, just the right time to give me a lot of t- attention make my ass i said that like north and south north and south who's which one's going to go down first which uh, town's going to get destroyed first that, that was fun and exciting so again i hope everybody watching has also had a quite bit of fun because we are going to have a dota 2 game coming up next but uh, i digress I, uh, our host angela is going to give you guys uh, the lowdown on what's going to happen next and uh, I guess that's it. So this has been the ESL India Premiership's Clash Royale game of the day, Mukul versus Sushil, out of which uh, Mukul has won the score of three to two. Again, before I sign off, though, I'd like just like to thank our sponsors: Omen by HP, Zoe by BenQ, HyperX, Intel, uh, sticking with us at Northern Gaming. So, bye bye. Premiership Mukul securing a victory for himself in the phase two of the winter season, making himself a more stronger position now in the ESL India Premiership. But Sushil need not worry; he still has a few games left for him. If you guys have missed out any games, you want to check them out. You can head out to our YouTube channel ESLindia.com. If you also want to know our hashtags, you can just hashtag ESL India Premiership and let us know who do you think is going to be taking the winter finale that's going to be happening in December during Comic Con. If you guys could guess that. And the, this event is brought to you by Omen by HP, Zoe by BenQ, HyperX, and Talent, organized by Norman Gaming. I'm your host Angela, and we have brought another game for you very soon, so don't go anywhere.
morning, everybody. Welcome back to the SL India Premiership Winter Season Phase 2. I'm your host, Angela, and this event is brought to you by Owen by HP, Zai by BenQ, HyperX, and Tel, and organized by Nordbin Gaming. There is no Counter Strike today because most of the games are over. But coming up next, we have Dora 2 for you, folks. It's going to be Knuckleheads going up against Akatsuki. Now, Knuckleheads are from Mangalore and have been playing together for about two years. Falling Slowly is one of the players who I personally would like to commend because he's playing pretty, pretty good. They entered the Masters League after a very interesting performance in the October Phase Challenger League where they came in almost first and got a slot into the Masters League. In the Masters League Phase 1, they had a mixed performance and weren't really able to make their mark but in the second phase, they seeming to have been having a better form here. Today, they go up against Team Sakatsuki who is Akatsuki now is led by Madra, their main captain and the player of the team from two years. He's formed his players over the past two years and they look very experienced over the time in the SL India Premiership. In the summer and the fall season, they didn't really have a very good performance but coming in into the winter season they have really changed the table they are sitting right now on the top of the leaderboard very close to white shadows and have been having a very impeccable performance both these both these teams haven't really played each other before this in the face and also are being playing together as teams from two years so let's see how this game is going to go as we head into it with our casters from afk gaming and i will see you all right after that Shit.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ESL India Premiership. My name is Vivek. With me is Sammy, and you're watching Team Akatsuki take on the Knuckleheads. How's it going, Sammy? I'm doing. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I just actually survived a bike accident this morning, so I'm fine. Chip I'm in. Fine. Yeah, okay. I know. There you are. There you are. Yeah. Uh, so Knuckleheads, you've been watching them a lot. I've seen them put up an impressive performance versus the council. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they picked Meepo that time around. And yeah. although council did win the game, it was really close. And Knuckleheads played some really good Dota. Yeah, they actually did. And I was really impressed with their gameplay. And Falling Soli have made some really commendable, uh, gameplay in the past few games they have played. So, um, all eyes are actually on him. He's like, like, you know, the MVP of this team right now. But, um, I'm, we were actually confused with the last, uh, team game they had, uh, against, I forgot who were they against. Five Little Chimps, most likely. Yes. They were yeah. against Five Little Chimps. So I was actually, um, you know, surprised with their style of picks because they changed their roles. And Akatsuki already responded with a sanking pick here while banning out the Shadow Shaman, Enchantress, and Silencer. So, whoa. Uh, Silencer, I understand the ban now because of the Sand King. They do not want to ruin the channeled ultimate. Knuckleheads already coming in here with a Nature's Prophet and Slaughter. Oh, wow. I haven't seen Nature's Prophet in such a long time. In such a long time in ESL. Yeah. Uh, I like the Nature's Prophet pick. Uh, the offlane is harder now uh, because of the creeps meeting closer to the safe lane tower. Uh, with the treants early on, you should be able to disrupt the lane, take the enemy creep aggro away, take creeps away, get that early EXP. You're a global threat. You can split push. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think he's a good offlane. And I guess we're going to see him getting picked up even more now. For set of bands from Knucklehead's pretty standard stuff just uh meta focused at the moment nick's night stock and earth shaker that earth shaker ban makes sense because they do want to run some sort of a push with the nature's profit and they do not want to be encountering an echo slam when they plan to go high ground of course of course that is actually a good ban coming from knuckleheads that they did their study well and knuckleheads actually understands that they have to ban medusa because madara uh he showed really a uh, pretty good Med uh, medusa plays i think a couple of days ago when they were uh -huh. up yeah, with the Medusa play. So Akatsuki, uh, they got Medusa out of their carry slot here, and they have banned that lifestealer as a response for the knuckleheads. Um, now Sven being picked up as the fourth, uh, as the second pick here. Are, are they confident? Like they, I, I think, I think that they are very, very confident with this pick here because yeah, it's so early. Yeah, I'm not sold on picking a one position this early on. They've picked up the Sven straight away. And uh, Knuckleheads, I mean, they didn't hesitate, right? They picked up the Slada, so you got that corrosive right, ways to help right. deal with the Sven and deal with all that extra armor he's getting from that war cry. Now, mm -hmm. Akatsuki went on and banned up the Lifestealer. This is primarily because Slada gets an early blink and he can take the Lifestealer into battle when he's infested inside of him. And there's a lot of pickup potential working uh, amongst the both of them. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I like you, I think, that the Sven is a little too cocky this early on. There are a lot of ways to deal with him. You can test him when he goes to farm ancients. The corrosive haze is one of the better ways to deal with him. And Sven is known to be one of those heroes that <laughs> does get kited a lot early on. Um, next next yeah. set of bands. Um, I don't know why the razor ban. It could be that Knuckleheads are thinking of running something like the OD or the Viper in the mid lane against whom the razor does well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I understand the Mirana ban as well because yesterday, um, I think it was Rizal who was playing the Mirana. Uh, his okay. Mirana was was really well done. Um, I, it was actually a mid Mirana. I guess they do not want to face the kind of hero who can have uh, who has the potential to go for mana break type of Mirana with a hundred leap speed attack speed. Uh, so yeah, it's very really lethal to have Mirana uh, uh, for knuckle knuckleheads here. Knuckleheads has responded with the Winter Wyvern. Um, very good pick here because I think that they do see that Sven with the God Strength on um, packs a lot of huge damage and it could could stop Sanking's ultimate. So they needed something to disable Sanking down if uh, if it, if he's within in Winter Wyvern's uh, ulti range. So good response by Knuckleheads. Akatsuki have responded with the Darkseer pick. That's interesting mm -hmm. to combo with Sanking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ba yeah, vacuum in, uh, Sanking at the center, boom. Yeah. With the wall. Uh, 
So, yeah, the Winter Wyvern pick, it's pretty good versus Sven. Sven is all physical damage. The Cold Embrace should be able to keep uh, your cores alive or even his supports alive if the Sven does jump up on them with God Strength. And yeah, uh, I mean, Winter Wyvern just punishes you for picking up too much physical damage and turns it against you and your team with uh, Winter's Curse. It's also good versus the Sand King, like you mentioned. Knuckleheads, they've got a little more heal com coming out. They've got the Necroforce, who's got the Ghost Route. Uh, now, one of the huge changes to Diffuser Blade is that it no more dispels. Mm -hmm. So you can't dispel the Ghost Route. I'd really like to see Akatsuki pick up the Oracle here. Because the Fortune's End on the Oracle can still get rid of uh, the Ghost Route. It's also <clears throat> it's also going to be good all around. It helps you deal with the Necroforce. He's a good 5. There is space for him on the side of Akatsuki if they want to pick up the Oracle. Well, Oracle, yeah, I have to agree with you being Oracle picked up here. But I, I think that, you know, if I do see the Dark Series going off lane and to complement with Sanking here, I think that, you know... Why not go for Nyx, though? I mean, Nyx is fun to play with. Uh, Nyx well, is I, banned see... I didn't see that. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, it's was okay. a second man. It's okay. 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 But yeah, it would have been really well complemented with Sanking here because, well, the stuns are absolutely real. Uh, they can change stun it. But um, I, uh, what uh, else I, do you think I, other than I, our Oracle? I'm... I'm... If I were you, I would just pick up the Oracle. False Promise is so good versus the target who gets focused by Reaper's Sight as well. Oh, but something. Akatsuki are going to hold off. They're going to pick up their mid laner instead. They're holding on to their five position till the very end. This is unusual. And if I were the knuckleheads, I'd just ban out the Oracle right now. I feel like this is something they have picked up from five little chimps because the five little chimps kind of draft was like, you know, a bit mixed up. They would choose uh -huh. the carry first or off lane first and something like that. And it was a bit confusing, but hey, they, they did great as much as they could now i mean Akatsuki, <laughs> that that could work picking yeah. up your carry first if he's like very hotly contested in this meta and for right. some reason he doesn't get banned but it's it's not the default you should be opening your drafting with anywho Ooh. we see a lich getting banned out um you know what oh. i see i feel like that akatsuki could do well with the witch doctor though it feels ah. well yeah, if it's well with the Dark Seer, the epicenter for the Sand King, why not? Stormstreak would come in with an Agony Scepter, vortex everyone in within the vicinity, Dark Seer vacuuming in, and this would be like some kind of TI style kind of a team fight coming up in front of my face, like you know, the flashbacks I can already see. <laughs> but yeah, okay. so um, I don't know if then again, I'm not sure if they're really going for that support pick. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a bit in unusual, like. I don't know if it's, if it's conventional to say In that In my that eyes, it's either Crystal Maiden or Oracle. That's oh, what I think. It's, I think so. I'm going out on a limb here. Uh, or Keeper of the Light. It's, it's either going to be one of these three. You're really shooting in the dark, though. I mean, I'm mean, i shooting in the dark, but I have a reason for where I'm shooting. I've seen <laughs> Akatsuki play a bit. And these are going to be my guesses. What else? I mean, I don't think it's going to be the Witch Doctor. Which Doctor fits well in this roster, though. I mean, it's a very good combo, yeah, for the lineup. But uh, it also works well for Knuckleheads as well. But it works with both the teams. But um, CM is a bit unconventional. I mean, she's very... The reason, like, the reason yeah. I say CM is because of her level 15 talent. Oh, okay. So I, I think that's 15... Mana cost, mana loss and all that? A yeah. lion. A lion. Okay. Okay, so it complements with Sand King's uh, bur burst, strike. So, yeah, they, they will be able to chain stun together. The the lockdowns are pretty real by Akatsuki's side. Yeah, they have a lot of lockdown. A lot of lockdowns. Now, Knuckleheads, what do they have in response to this? They do have a lockdown by the Slaughter, Winter Wave. So, what are Knuckleheads looking for? Knuckleheads are looking for a safe lane, though. Huh. Um, how would they would surprise you with a Slaughter as a carry, though? <laughs> That hasn't happened in a while, and I don't think this is... Could the... be it, yeah. Couldn't. Not sure. So, I mean, the Necroforce could go mid in which... Uh, the Necroforce could go to the safe lane, in which case they're looking for a mid laner. No, I think that Necroforce is more susceptible to go mid here. I think um, they could do Puck. I, I don't know. Necroforce, people uh... are pretty much comfortable putting him in either lane. I think it's a bit of a stretch to put Puck here. I think that they need more DPS to complement with Nature's Prophet's split push. 
Okay. They do. They do want to split push with them. I think anti mage. Oh, oh, invoker. Invo okay, you called it. Neck of us will go carry here. Invoker will be playing in the mid lane. Okay, a bit unexpected. Hmm. I don't mind. I I mean, I actually don't <laughs> mind the invoker pickup. Invoker sort of no, crushes Storm in lane. Storm is really weak in lane. There's limited setup for the Sunstrike. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this isn't too bad of a game to be in Invoker. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, w once he gets his like Midas and Agonims, he's gonna pretty much sure uh, wreak havoc around the map here. Yeah. Thing is, will Akatsuki will be able to shut down Invoker or not? That's the case because Invoker being shut off early in the mid lane is a bit of a troublesome for Invoker to actually catch up into the game from mid game to late game onwards. So mm -hmm. yeah, he really needs to keep a watch on the map for sun strikes and all that stuff, the potential sun strikes that his mm -hmm. team will provide the opening for him. So yeah, hopefully we're gonna go into the game right now. Uh, mm -hmm. But I see a lot of lockdowns coming from Akatsuki. I I'm not sure how yeah. Knuckleheads can Easy. really suppress this. Yeah, a lot of uh, team fight coming out from the side of Akatsuki, and a lot of burst damage as well. That's that's what a storm needs to really succeed as well. He needs lockdown and burst damage. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if if he's all by himself zipping in deep and there's nobody to follow up, a storm can't do much unless he's ever heavily out leveled and out farmed the enemy. But yeah. Uh, Akatsuki, there's a certain ease of execution to that draft. The team fight is ridiculously strong. I'm not sure if Knuckleheads have enough answers to deal with the Storm Spirit, but yeah. Yeah, I me mean, neither. The thing is that uh, I'm not sure if like Storm Spirit can handle well against Invoker though. I mean, he could. The burst damage, both the sides are definitely real, but it depends on like you know how to uh, outlane. So. If any of these players can outplay each other, I think that they will stand strong. But then again, it's the supports who will make or break the game for the early phase here. Yeah. And still another pause coming up. Yeah, get used to it. Indian teams just load. Hey, I'm pause. already used to this. Listen, in my side, we've seen like 20 to 1 hour pauses initially in the game, or even 5 minutes after into the game. 1 because hour pauses? Yeah, it was stretched that far. Not kidding. I'm not even exaggerating. It happens. Not sure if it's if it's frequent now, um, but it did happen a lot before. In Dota One or Dota Two? Two, two, two. That's ridiculous. I know, I know. It is. It was so ridiculous. Like the games would be like five minutes in, one hour pauses, and then it goes back into the game again, and we'll be like. Is it not over yet? Just Please don't tell me you were talking for one hour. I, I, I think I, I had to. I think I had to. Yeah, I remember I did. I was like talking bullcrap. <laughs> yeah. It was torture. Anyway, let's see. Uh, let's introduce the teams though uh, on yep. the Akashi side. Why don't you take that? Okay. Uh, uh, playing line, we have Pikachu. Dux is going to be played by Axel. He's heading to the <laughs> offlane. Madara on the Sven. Itachi Uchiha going to be playing that Sand King, and that leaves us with Sensu playing the Storm Spirit. All right, and on the dire side, the Knuckleheads, Ryza will be playing as Invoker, uh, Zeal will be playing as Necrophos, Asuna on the Winter Wyvern. The mid lane, we see that Agent Six is already touring around with Flutter, and a top lane falling slowly will be taking uh, will be playing as um, Nature's Prophet. Now this is a bit weird, falling slowly on safe lane, and the others will. Sh Will go down as like what uh aggressive trialing this could mm -hmm. this could look like it this could actually work really well uh for the knucklets because they've got enough to contest the swen early on the nature's profit is going to be fine in the safe lane i mean the dox is going to constantly be pushing the wave with the iron shell but he's got trains to help deal with that um early rotation coming up from akatsuki they're not going to catch anyone I mean, a lot of teams uh, after 7.07 just pretty much default like this in their opening. They go and they pick up the enemy's bounty rune. I, yeah. I don't know why teams are still doing this and Lion's Ward gets spotted out. Uh oh, that's gonna be a bit weird here, but okay, it seems like it's fine. Now, um, well, It's an unusual ward if you take a look at it. So, it does look at the rune. Cool, cool. I'm actually oh, going yeah. to toggle, yeah. This is 
Dire Vision. Let's go to Radiant Vision. There it is. So it looks at the rune, doesn't look at the lane. It's somewhat okay. Not a fan of the sword. Doesn't help Storm too much, but that's okay. It's gonna get dewatered also early on. Have they got sentries? Yeah, I think in like you know they did understand that there was a ward here, so yeah. it, so they'll get it. So wow, wow. five man disconnect. Game GG, call it quits. Akatsuki gets this game already. All right, <laughs> I'm joking, totally joking. <laughs> <laughs> Setsuna, call the game. Call uh, call everyone. This game is over. Oh no, they're coming back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm joking, totally joking. But yeah, this was very unusual. I think I think they're at a cyber cafe or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they are. Oh, I presume. Okay. I mean, there are only two explanations. They have a boot camp, but they're at a cyber cafe. So, I mean, I haven't casted too many games of uh, this edition of ESL just yet, mm -hmm. of this phase. It's primarily been you, uh, Floki, and uh, Angela. But I have never seen this team before, and I'm actually surprised at how good they are. I'd like to probably chat, oh, Jesus, just as they say that, they all disconnect. <laughs> but I'd probably like to chat with them after the game, if there is indeed a game, and find out a little bit more about this team. Do you know which country they're from? India? Uh, they're from India, I heard. Yeah, uh, Bangalore. I think ah, they're from Bangalore. Oh, okay. So Bangalore has one of the most happening Dota 2 scenes in India. I mean, it's it's always a pleasure whenever a tournament takes place in Bangalore because you have a real crowd who's right. not coming just to look at cosplayers or just to look at virtual reality on the side or whatever, but actually <laughs> coming to support the game. And, wow, that's uh, cool. They, yeah, they really enjoy the game. I remember a recent event. Um, yeah, there, there was this event and we had like 150 people actually sitting and watching Dota and enjoying Whoa. it. Whoa, really? That is awesome. That is yeah. absolutely awesome. Big crowd. Big I crowd. think even at last year's... So even last year's LAN finale, mm -hmm. which took place in Delhi, right. which is the capital of India, we had a lot of people. Uh, but always there are more people for Counter-Strike because, hey, Counter-Strike is somewhat easy to understand, right? It's point, shoot, and kill. And everybody looks at Dota and runs away. But yeah, <laughs> we had a fair bit. But Bangalore is always the place to be if there's a LAN event. It's kind of the opposite for me. I run away when I see Counter Strike, and I just like to see Dota more. I don't know why. I don't hate, don't hate, no hate, just appreciate. <laughs> but I tried. I'm not. I'm not an FPS fan much. I mean, like okay. it's, I, I, I try, but uh, the FPS game I like is more Borderlands. Anyway, back into the game. Oh, finally it started. Barely in 30 seconds, but hey, the pause was like five or ten minutes or something. So Oops. this is really interesting. What? The knucklets are doing yeah. is pretty much what one of India's top teams used to do. Uh, so Asuna on the Winter Wyvern and HE and Six were just camping the, this part of the trees. Yeah. And they were looking for a gank, but it seems as if Akatsuki are much more successful. Double Iron Shell, they're body blocking the Nature's Prophet, and the last hit from Pikachu will mean that they get first blood. Well, already they're being so aggressive. Both, both teams actually open in a similar fashion. They both just camped the side, waiting for the safe laner to show. Mm -hmm. The thing is that Sven had a better block than the Nature's Prophet, so there was no way that the Winter Wyvern and the Slada could uh, try and cut him off. Which they're going to try and do once more. Etchin 6 is still there. Sven needs to be careful, but there are TPs coming in. Arctic Burn to start things off. The Crush, not there. Madara gets the Storm Hammer first. There's the Crush. Immediate Hex from Pikachu, not enough to bring down a Sven. Well, yeah, he got really saved there be, uh, because of the help of Lion. But Madara, oh, oh yeah. okay, also top lane, of something happening? Okay, not much though. But uh, speaking in terms of the Sven, though, I really like how he's able to control his creeps to more into his territory rather than to the enemy side. Although they're being very aggressive, the uh, knuckleheads. Um, but he's he's able to keep his composure compared to falling slowly. Falling slowly is like already alone, and getting a kill, being killed like that, really sets him off here. Now, in the mid lane, let's see how it is. Um, Sensu not doing that great, not much of a mana here, while Ryza was able to keep his mana in check. Uh, pretty much look good last hit as well. Now, um, whoa, top lane, seems like Axel is already on the move here. He's being a bit aggressive, going under the tower like that, falling slowly. Will you be going for the Sprout kill or something? No, you don't have a Sprout. Uh, but whoa, Axel already taking some creep damage here. Um, but he's gonna get chased out by the creeps. 
I think the dark sir can keep doing this. He can cut the creep wave unless there's support to punish him, which mm -hmm. is when he's got to be careful. Right now, but yeah. Yeah, Itachi Uchicha is now already in position here to see if Raizel can go around the river and go for the stun kill here for Sensu, but I don't see that he's going to get any much of an opening. Uh, Raizel is trying to stay at a very good range here. He will not fall down. Oh, okay, no, the stun is already used here. Sensu, will he make the kill for it? No, the aggression is a bit to be done, but there is already two support coming from Agent 6, and we'll have to push away to engage the fight. Yeah, without the remnant connecting, that was a really hard kill, but hey, the Sand King tried. He forced out a TP at the very least, which is a small but minor victory. Um, how's everybody looking in terms of CS? Daxia is having the time of his life. Um, well, it seems as if Akatsuki are really suffering in their safe lane. Yeah. The Necroforce is doing rather well compared to the Sven. And we were... I mean, weren't you expecting the Invoker to be fine in the mid lane, but Storm is doing just well here. Yeah, uh, I was like assuming that he would. I mean, the way he was like pushing Storm Spirit away, using dispelling all the mana and all that out of him. But I guess it's a bit opposite here, Sensu, doing that. Doing pretty good here. Um, he's got his regions in check. Bottom of the lane, Itachi Uchiha goes in with the Baro Strike. There's action all across the map. You got a cold embrace though, so that's gonna buy some time for the Necrophos who turns around with the Dead Pulse. Should get the kill on the Sand King. What? Changes targets? No. He's still chasing, but Itachi Uchiha looking for the DP. He's across oh there. Oh my god. A second too late. He got saved. That one inch niche of a kill. And he just TP'd right at the last second. That slaughter stun. Oh man, what a miss. Yeah. What a near miss. Well done. So, Zeal and the Necroforce for a second switch targets. And I think that's what allowed Itachi Uchiha to TP out on the Sand King. Yeah, anyway, yeah. that should have been a kill. They didn't end up getting it. A bit of a misclick, I guess, for yeah. the cost of that. Make Pikachu already made eye to eye with 18-6 here. Will they be chasing though? Pikachu already making the move here, stunning him out. Will he be able to scare him? Yeah, he does. He's like, bro, do not come into this territory. I will kill you. And now they have smoked up here mid lane. It seems like it's gonna be in trouble. Mm hmm. Or not. Wait, what are the supports are gonna do though? I think they're. They're gonna wrap around. Yeah, yeah. Wait, Sand King going behind with the smoke already in the making. Uh, uh, Pikachu showed himself now. The problem is. Oh, Storm has a haste proof. This should be a kill. Rizal doesn't have a point in Vex. No way he ghost walks out of there. But supports are coming in. Slada chasing further south while Rizal. Saved by the Cold Embrace. Does have a little bit of mana. Good turnaround. They did manage to bring down the Lion. Two man Barrow Strike coming out from Itachi Uchiha. And with another Remnant, they'll get the kill in the Invoker. They could chase for more. I think the Slada has been tagged by the Caustic. He's going to die to the Caustic. Oh, he doesn't. No. Barely survives. But they get the Invoker and they lose the Lion. I think Akatsuki are going to be just fine with that trade. Yeah, uh, I mean, you you took down their mid core. That is actually something a, a gank successful for Akatsuki. Now, it's sad a bit though that Lion had to die because of Agent 6. Agent was able to push him away from the main battle here. So, yeah. yeah. That's what really happened. So, it's falling slowly. Let's see how he's up to. He's got his face, but he's not gonna, he's gonna be close to making his drums here. I guess I don't see that he will go for Midas. He's not gonna look for look for a chance to go Midas this time, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, I see the supports so from Akatsuki already coming in here. Will they chime in into a fight? I am not sure, but okay. Uh, Surge, Iron Shell, two points in Battle Strike. They could go for this. Falling slowly, might have to sprout himself and TP out. He's just gonna TP out. Iron Shell, Caustic. I mean, if Itachi Uchiha possibly attacked the creeps, the burst from the Caustic finale could have secured the kill, but it was unlikely at best. Mada seems to be not doing that great because of the necro hash. Oh, going on mid here. lane storm. Oh. Was quick with the zip. Yeah, apologies, Madara. No, no, totally, totally fine. I thought there would be a kill. But uh, Madara not doing that great because he's getting a lot of harassing. Winter River yeah. and Zeal here. The Death Pulse damage is absolutely real, no matter how many times it gets nerfed, though. But um, Zeal's doing a great <laughs> job. <laughs> doing a great job. But yeah, Necrophos is cancer. Always, always it's gonna remain as a cancer here. Now, mid lane, um, we see that Agent 6 is like roaming around here, but I'm not sure if he's gonna go for the kill. Sensu getting a little bit of hits and blows from Ryzel. 
Um, but he's gonna be fine using the salve. Top lane, uh, they've gone in on the nature's prophet. The iron shell is there. Sand King tanks the tower, takes the wrath of nature and dies. Oh. That was comic and unusual. Axel caught in the sprout, the sun strike isn't there. Not sure if the sprout timed out or he just vacuumed and brought down the trees, but Axel survives and Hitachi Uchiha gives his life for nothing. Didn't even get the Baru strike off. Yeah, I, um, I guess I kind of missed out on that one. Um, Invoker probably wasn't really sh looking for that kind of sunstrike kind of a kill. But we want to see a little bit more supports coming in here, but falling slowly. Oh, falling. Because... Oh, it goes by? Or not? Oh, wait, no, hold on. Pikachu already getting ganged out here. He will have to die with the death pulse. While on the sidelines, Falling Slowly was able to get a kill on Darks here. Yeah, so somehow, uh, I did manage to catch that. Falling Slowly pretty much kind of knew where the Darks here was. Oh. Teleported in, caught him in the Sprout, and the Sunstrike was there. Wow, that was pretty cool of him. Now, Itachi Uchicha already made it here, and oh wow, that cost finally did a huge number on Asuna. But look at this, Falling Slowly, he's moved to the bot lane, the Sunstrike is there gonna connect, they get a kill on Pikachu and this could transition into an early push coming out from Knuckleheads. Good stuff coming out from Falling Slowly. Wow, okay, so they're pretty pretty uh, active around the map here it just seems like. Now they're really focusing on the tower objective, which is good for them. They really need to act fast. Yeah. the kills and the towers as soon as possible. Soon Tensu, um, I'm not sure how he's doing though. He, oh, he's gonna make a jump on Invoker. Invoker's like barely there with the HP. Uh, sorry, uh, in the mana cost. But well, okay, no, he's able to dodge the final Falling Slow's ultimate here. But will he be remaining all right? So he's hiding within the trees. Do they know? Do they know? I think they do. Oh my God, Sensu, you <laughs> you got out here. You zipped out, but you are not gonna zip up this time. You don't have the mana, and you will be brawled out by Falling Slowly with the Sprout. Oh my gosh, what is going on? <laughs> Yeah, that was costly for Akatsuki. I mean, Storm had a double damage rune, was winning the mid lane, but pretty much, I mean, some form of equilibrium has been restored in the mid lane thanks to that kill on the Storm Spirit. Uh, it's a tier 1 for a tier 1. Akatsuki did manage to get the top tier 1, but mm -hmm. falling slowly with that quick rotation, did manage to bring down the enemy tier 1 as well. The problem is that Sven exits the laning phase without not much farm to show, not even power threads at the 10 minute mark. Yeah, this is a bit of an issue here. Now, um, looking at Madara's items, he's close to getting his um, Mask of Madness. Um, but, okay, wait, I see the stuns are coming up on Necropos, but will they go for the aggression here? They, he is definitely sucking up the mana from Zeal. But I'm not sure if they want to go for an offensive kill. Lion could go make an opening for him, but he, he sees that Zeal is being protected by two other supports from mm -hmm. Asuna and 86, so not much of an action going on here. Because you're going way too close with the enemy. Not sure if this is gonna be an opening. Top lane. They've oh. gone in on falling slowly. They've got the Baru Strike falling slowly with the Sprout. But they got the vacuum to cancel the DP. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, they chase down Pikachu. They bring down the lion. Wow. And Matara. <laughs> not <laughs> much he can do here. Yeah, the kills are already happening around the map here. Falling slowly was. Oh, I actually lost the streak though, so uh, that's a bit of a disappointment. Um, yeah, if in... Falling Slowly managed to survive that, he yeah. could have actually TP'd to the bottom lane and possibly secured a tier 2. He could have, he could have, but I guess, you know, he got caught out. So, a bit of a disadvantage here that will be set up on um, Falling Slowly. Sensu, already with the farms here, he needs to get his um, Kaya. He needs to get his Kaya. Um, Axel, or, oh, Going around this enemy jungle here, I think they want to go go on a gank for Raizo. But let's see, bot lane, there's already a commotion here. Falling slowly comes in. Okay, Akatsuki uh, already died down. Madara being killed by Agent 6 and Raizo was able to get a kill on Tensu as well. Okay, so two heroes are already down. Two core heroes, that's that's really big volumes. And they were able to get a kill on Knuckle, uh, on Raizo here in the mid lane by the two supports. Uh, they were actually looking for a kill there. Bot lane, already Pikachu going down because of Falling slowly. What is going on? 3 for 1. So this is yeah, a huge trade for Knuckleheads. I Knuckle did Head. catch the Invoker die, but I did catch the rest of it. I mean, <laughs> Knuckleheads made a slightly silly error there. They really didn't have to chase all the way for the line. They could have just taken the tier 2 instead. Mm -hmm. And now they may or may not get it. They still have the Reaper's side though, so that's going to work in uh, their favor. The Necroforce 
can really turn this fight around. Axel surges himself forward. Two points in the vacuum, but the Trian's blocking him off. HN6 getting really close to that blink. The Arctic burn slowing down Axel. Pikachu looking spike. This is a bit of a weird disengagement provided by Akatsuki, but they really needed whatever they Losing towers. Because it will definitely give uh, Nature's Prophet the upper hand to go furthermore in ra into ratting. Now, already he's actually starting it. Um, he's gonna yeah. go make a move for the top, uh, top lane tier 1. So yeah, it seems like it's gonna happen now. We already see some smokes coming up from Knuckleheads. Knuckleheads already meets face. He oh no, wait, he's invisible. But he stops his thing TP for Sensu though. What? Yeah, he got go that. Yeah, he got that. But yeah, he just <laughs> clever plays, mischievous plays from Agent Six. But um, no one's gonna go for the kill on Storm Spirit here. Bot lane. Um, Darkseer and Itachi Uchicha are actually like you know tag teaming around here uh, with this. This crypto, but okay. Um, not sure what's going on, but uh, they are trying to roam around to see if they can go for a kill. It seems they're attacking me together, but I guess they separated right now. Already, Madara. Oh, they've got Madara. Two man storm hammer. He's got the corrosive haze upon him. The drums popped. Epicenter channel. This is pretty much a death slider. Heck, they even commit the finger. Axel with the vacuum. Pulls falling slowly back into that epicenter. But Zeal is here with the Reaper side. Should get the kill onto the line. And he's got that extra regen kicking in. Axel being forced back. Forced to surge away. Another death pulse elsewhere. Storm zips forward. Managed to bring down falling slowly. <laughs> and gets away. They get the line, but they lose the slider and the nature's profit. Huh. Um, if Nature's Prophet didn't die, they could start pushing. But every time in these fights, they lose the Nature's Prophet time and time again. And that's kind of co costing them. I'd like to see Knuckle has actually slowed it down. Maybe just complete that blink on the Slada. Mm -hmm. Who's uh, yeah. getting so close. He's, he needs that kind of space right now. He cannot come in to go buy support items. So, um, Winter Women has to pick up the slack for him. Although very poor on the money here, but hopefully he will get some gold from the tower kill. And we'll have to suffice in buying some yeah. uh, wards around around the map here. Akatsuki mm -hmm. already making some move here. Tag team already. Axel, Uchi, and Itachi are already making a move here. But, whoa, why did he use the god's friend? What Madara? was that? Madara, what was that? I don't understand why did he I mean, if me? I were Knuckleheads, <laughs> I would just run in and fight them right now. You couldn't <laughs> ask for a better chance. I I have to agree, but I guess Madara, I don't know if it's triggered or something, or maybe I misclicked because, well, sometimes people do make a misclick on the R button. But there was no stacks made for Sven, no stacks, so the godstone is actually a bit of a waste, so he has to wait for a minute. For that, uh, for the next battle to actually go for the God Strength. Now, falling slowly already with his Rat Army, already going, getting close to it. But whoa, he needs a bit of a few enemies here at the top lane, and we'll have to depush this by Axel using the Iron Shell pretty cleverly here. Mm -hmm. And they try to look for Nate's Prophet too within the trees, but they could not get him. All of this does space for Invoker, who's caught up, who's gonna have his axe soon enough. He's done really well for himself. Uh, despite the hard start he had in the lane. I was expecting him to go Midas though. Oh, he, he, he didn't go Midas. He skipped Nor the Midas altogether. Yeah, so did, mm. so did uh, Nature's Prophet. And I understand why Nature's Prophet shouldn't go Midas because, well, he got killed a lot here. But okay, we already see some moves here by Agent 6. Sunstruck will be, have to be used here. Madara, oh, wow, the Corsair Hades will do the huge damage on that one. And yeah, yeah Agent 6 was able to get a kill on Madara pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Not. So, Akatsuki are placed with a bit of a dilemma here. Do we. Okay, they're gonna get the tier 2 top. Uh, while it seems as if Knuckleheads are gonna march down mid. And they're marching down mid with the Blink Dagger on the Sand King. So... Falling slowly has TP to the mid lane as well. Uh, Pikachu on the line just trying to deal with the push in the bottom lane. They lose the tier 2 top, but they're marching down mid. And uh, no defense just yet coming out from Akatsuki. No Blink on the Sand King, no Blink on the Sven. And just a Helm... Uh, as well as a pipe complete on the dark side. That's quite significant, actually. Yeah, that's more standard. Uh, that's pretty much expected. But it's just... I'm not sure. Like, things are not looking great for Akatsuki here. Uh, no, I they're not. Mad Madara is like... He looks like he lost his edge here. I feel like he did. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I hope he's okay. I mean, he's not He's <laughs> not that very well leveled, though. I mean, compared to Darkseid, Darkseid is like level 12. Madara is like only level 9. Do you see the levels? Um, yeah. Since 
Densu is like level 13, he's okay, but... I mean, the Sand King is the same level as his one position. That's... what does it say? I mean... Sven did not handle well at bot lane. Uh, he really needs to make up for the time lost and the farm lost here, but whoa, the God Strength? He yeah, they, he committed Godson, but they just popped the glyph and now Slara is going to DP in and possibly Maybe a bit too late, possibly land a crush, oh they get vision, they had the Wrath of Nature, two man crush coming up from Agent 6 The follow up is there, the meteor as well as the deafening blast, Madara being controlled by the cold snap, running into the rush pit Will finally end up falling to the invoker, Axel on the retreat, caught in the sprout They have got the corrosive ace, they've got the reaper side, they'll get the darks here It's all going horribly wrong for Akatsuki in this mid game yeah, I didn't expect that from Akatsuki. Um, falling slowly has done pretty good plays here, but Agent 6 really turned the tide. I mean, the way he started the fight though, the, the, stu the stun on the two-man stun really, really did a huge, 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 I'm sorry, it's a good number, a huge number for Akatsuki to be like falling like this. And falling slowly doing the follow-up is really well done. So this really creates an opening for them to get the Roshan pretty easily right now. And whoa, okay. Uh, Asuna, not, not in the safe place, buddy. It's that you can just sees this. Uh, Sensor comes in here. We'll have to go on Asuna, but the heal will have to help him. But no, he's, get, he's gonna get fingered out by a lion here. Uh, Sanking already with the amped out damage, and he will get wrecked by Raizo. But the chase is not over. Sensu already being chased here by both Spawn Slowly and. Um, oh no, he escapes away. He escapes away. So, yeah, they don't want to fight anymore. They don't want to lose anymore. Like, you know, have any casualties on the map. They, they, they can't. They can't. They I cannot mean, afford it. You either you either fight this for this tier 2 tower, mm -hmm. or you let the Sven get space and get his Bling Dagger. I don't think that Bling Dagger is going to come by the time Knuckleheads are knocking on high ground and yeah Akatsuki I mean they've got to land the wombo combo of their life if they want to hold on to this game the good thing is that Itachi Uchiha on the Sand King has completed his blink dagger so that's something working in their favor but I'm just you know like worried for Sven though I mean he does not have much he has yes. only a Mask of Madness, and he's so far away from completing his blink. I yep. wonder how much more space does his teammates have to create so that he can actually get his items. Um, blink is a bit of uh, yeah, a lot of space needed, and a lot of uh, screw ups are needed from Knuckleheads to actually capitalize upon. So Madara, I, I like how bluntly you put it. A lot of screw ups. Well, I have to be straightforward about it. I mean, this is what I mean. They really I mean, I I agree. They they need Knuckleheads to slip up. And all Knuckleheads need to do is probably just group up and march high ground. They've got what? the Radiance complete on the Necroforce. Oh man, already? In, oh in, yeah, Invoker's got his Ags, he's got a Blink Dagger, so that's going to allow him to position himself and follow up with the Slada. <sighs> Things are not looking uh, that good for Akatsuki here. Uh, no way. No I mean, what, what they're sort of hoping for is to try and find a pickoff and never let Knuckleheads group up. Now that's the thing, they have to take advantage on their high ground at the base. So they really yeah. need to rely on Sand King's ultimate, the Dark Seas yeah. ultimate, and his vacuum as well. So this really, really needs to be well done and well sequenced out here. So Knuckleheads cannot really like, you know, fight off against this kind of huge AoE damage. Now, that means the whole burden of the world falls upon uh, Sensu and Sand King. Which, which you know, I'm not sure if they can really carry it out for the team, for their team. So yeah, let's see how they will carry it through. I think that right now they need to pick off the kills rather than take team fights yeah. because taking team yeah. fights right now without Sven, um, because Sven has lost his edge and now I see that there's already being a pick off here. Oh, oh. Look at this. HN6 scooped up. He crushed the ground and then blinked in. I'm pretty sure that's not how it's done. The good thing is falling slowly is here with an orchid that should be a death storm. The cold embrace to hold Axel in place. Asuna doesn't care about the wall of replica, but there's the epicenter. It might be enough to bring down HN6, and indeed it will be. Rizal with the meteor, with the deafening blast, hoping to bring down one. He should be able to get the kill on a Sand King that was primarily sealed with the Reaper side, but Darkseer got away. They committed, they committed everything in the kitchen sink, and all they got was a Slada. Akatsuki. This is I what mean, I was talking about. it's only getting worse, and it might. Okay, falling slowly was going to TP on top of the light, but yeah. Well, that's what I like. This is what I really expected them. Like you know, Akatsuki, they cannot take team fights right now, and they had to commit it with Epicenter. Now it's down for like more than a minute. This, 
this is a bit of like you know uh, very obsolete for Akats to like you know find an advantage to win at this point because mm -hmm. well it could go swing already towards knuckleheads here and they're already at a huge level advantage compared to Akatsuki. Sven mm -hmm. already at level 12 while their carry um Nekapos, level 14 already with radiance here yeah and, drop and... down the levels i mean yeah then Sven is 12 final. yeah Sven? Then uh, got his blink. He's got his blink. That's cool. Uh, things are looking up for him, but you know, still the damage is not all the way there. Can mm -hmm. he, like, you know, sustain oh, that? Oh, Sensu, the cold snap. They've got enough to hold him in place. That storm constantly trying to zip out of there with the ball lightning won't be able to. So Zeal is making the plays. Well done. Yeah, but um, I, just like what I said, I mean, they cannot really. Uh, I think that now it seems like no one can be alone at this point. Sensu was alone, right? He was alone in the middle of five? Yeah, I'm not sure what he was trying to do. Probably pick up the enemy bounty rune or what the plan was. But yeah, he was. Wow. He got caught out by the invoker and got punished. Yeah, now, I guess now hunting anyone for scoff it seems obsolete at this point as well. So... Actually, yeah, so Sensu was trying to farm up his... Um, Bloodstone, he needed one component, I think the Ring of Health, and he was farming the enemy jungle and he got punished. He uh, felt as if the Knuckleheads didn't have enough lockdown. The only problem with the Knuckleheads is that they have sort of wasted their first ages. Mm -hmm. They haven't gotten too much done. I mean, it took down a tier 2, but I I just sense they haven't pushed their advantage enough. And this has allowed the Sven to farm up his Blink Dagger. Well, Sven, is that I... enough? I'm not sure. No, no. Uh, Rise of could see that Zven is around here and they uh. do see it. The ghost block is already real, but I'm not sure if Rise will commit to this. He already sees there's a buddy here with Itachi. Um, yeah. yeah, he's not gonna go for it. Rise is showing cool. a lot of discipline there. It's yeah. tempting to get carried away, but he was waiting for his team to join him and then maybe they go on the Sven. You better not go full greedy on this one. No way. This will yeah. really set back into the fight. They're already at a gold advantage, a 10k gold advantage, so they should not really risk it and mm -hmm. give the gold. All the way to you know Madara. Now Madara now is gonna go for uh, BKB. I think that's a much like it's like a necessary evil kind of an item that he needs to get. Now he needs, um, it. He needs it. This is a very necessary item he needs to get. Now, I, yeah. now the thing is that you know they're pretty much trying to farm up the rats that are being sent by Nature's Prophet. So mm -hmm. not sure how long this game will carry through. It, I could see this game could go late if this continues. Mm -hmm. That means that Madara might shine in late game if yeah. he gets all the farm. Yeah. I mean, Akatsuki could very easily just win a team fight and take a couple of tier twos on the back of it. I mean, yeah. if the Sven survives with Godshren, heck, even with the Helm and the Dominator to buff your region and your attack speed, you could see Akatsuki pushing equally fast here. Now, did you see that Nature's Prophet has picked up a PKP as well? Yeah, I did catch that. He's had it for a while. Oh. Now, I guess he does not want to face like Lion and Stan King all in that chaos. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what does he need to go next? A Shadow Blade? Uh, yeah, because, like, he needs to solo rat this, right? I think if the plan is to push, you gotta get a pipe. Yeah. I think Zeal is picking up. The pipe, the pipe on yeah, the neck of force. Yeah, he's got the Hudu Defiance already at the ready. I um, mean, yeah. ideally, if you're knuckleheads, you do not want to be thinking as to what your next item should be. Right. You gotta start warding around Roshan, get Aegis and Cheese, and may then try and end the game. Yeah. Now, it seems like Sensu is also opting to go BKB as well. Yeah, Sensu um, needs it. The problem is that both Reaper's Sight as well as the Winter's Curse go through BKB. Yeah. Um, I'm. I mean, I, I see benefits for the BKB, but I also see benefits for the Lincoln Sphere. Yeah, I was with, gonna mention that. Lincoln yeah, Sphere. which blocks the Reaper side as well as the Winter's Curse. But Lotus Orb would, would work so well on Dark Seer though. If yeah. you can like, land it on like you know whoever's going in, the, like for example, Sand King yeah. or Storm Spirit, it would work epic for Necropos here. Absolutely. I mean, getting back, backed out like this. Now, oh, okay, the Roshan just spawned up here. Uh, Ancient Six gets the first view. And oh, they caught Madara. They almost caught Madara. HN6, he went in with the sprint, didn't go for the crush, instead dropped a ward and oh, Madara okay. got away. So, should Akatsuki take the fight on the Roshan or is it too risky? Um, Hold on, I'm going to check buyback. 
so Madara is buyback. I guess you just defend high ground. You have no vision. It's too late to try and contest anyways. And yeah, you just got to hold on to your high ground and pray that somehow you defend. Now, I have a feeling, I have a strong feeling in them. Not, even though they have the... Why do I have this strong feeling that Knuckleheads could, could make a screw up here um, when they defend their high ground? I am not sure, but I have a feeling that they might. That's my call. So, okay, okay, okay. now there's a pause coming up here. And I'm not sure if uh, Madara... Yeah, Madara is on my friend's list. He just disconnected. <laughs> oh, I see. I mean, I think he restarted his Dota or some such thing. He changed his internet because I just saw him come online. Oh, uh, okay. I hope he's okay. I'm, I guess he was experiencing lag or what? I don't know. He looked like he was. Nah, I hope he's okay. Anyway, at the bot lane, we see that um, Itachi is like alone right now. This guy is like so lonely with the smoke. And I'm not sure if he's gonna look for a solo kill and solo epi the hell out of any hero he finds in front of him. But we see some aggression here already in the mid lane. Um, not sure if who is gonna take the high ground first. Mm -hmm. What? I'd like to see Falling Slowly do is just catch the Sand King if he can. <laughs> he's but it's escaped. too late. Yeah. yeah. He's, he, he escaped. I mean, going high ground with the number advantage could have been huge. Right. Now, the thing is that Knuckleheads, if they really want to go take the high ground advantage, Asuna really needs to make a really good winter curse here. Uh, let's say oh, that he's This is it. audible. I mean, Sensu's gone in, the Sunstrike awaits him, and with the Aoki, okay, they're gonna get the kill on the Storm Spirit. I appreciate and understand Sensu's sentiment there. He probably wanted to kill off the Nature's Prophet and ensure that they can't push, but he instead ends up going down. The good thing is he has a Bloodstone, and he's gonna respawn quickly. Yeah, but he lost a few charges though, right? I mean, that's a bit of a disadvantage. It is, it is. I also understand what he's trying to do. He thought the sand, the Nature's Prophet would be alone. Maybe if I kill him, Knuckleheads wouldn't want to push. But... But a bit of yeah. a miss there, yeah. Miscalculate. Oh, HN6 goes in. He's got Pikachu with the crush, the Sun Strike to follow up. Line might have to make a base trip, but instead it's the Invoker with the Deafening Blast to actually send him right to base. HN6 dropping low, cold embrace, did by him a little bit of time. There's Madara with the caution. The Storm Hammer on to do, but the crush is there. The epicenter oh. to follow. Where is the epicenter? It's in base. Itachi Uchiha has messed it up, and Madara with the cold snap, with the Reaper's Sight, will end up going down. Knuckleheads, they're forced to dead on the Sven. This could be a series of buybacks, or it could be Akatsuki just forfeiting a lane of racks. Heck, even more. So, no buybacks will be used here, it seems, but Sven will not call this. Um, Sensu just zaps in and just gets out. Now, already opened up the racks for them, but I don't, I don't understand. Sven will not buy back for this, nor will Darkseer to defend. I don't know. I mean, if they're not buying back, you pretty much assume that you lost the game. Oh, they boy. might as well just tap out now. Then, I, I, the, the right call is to buy back and fight, but they aren't buying back. No, okay. It, things are not really looking good for them. Um, yeah. Bit of a miscalculation there. Uh, Sanking not putting up with the LT it was a big, big, big delay here. And Winter Winter Curse by Winter River was really well done. As I said, the, it was the make or break game for Asuna. Uh, as I said earlier, when they needed to go high advantage, a high ground advantage here. Age Six starting the initiation like that was really, really well done. He really started the fight really well done. Okay, now they're bought back. There is a smoke too, man. Butter strike yeah. immediately. AP on the ground. Madara jumps in. Golden Grace onto one. Vacuum wall. It's nice to look at. But where's the follow-up? Two man earth back. They're trying to bring down this Necroforce. Necroforce. Well, he manages to survive, but Etchin 6 drops to the finger. They're still in the wall. They take the tornado. They take the meat wall. Heck, the Deafening Blast pushes them back. Akatsuki, they're trying to hold on here, but Axel caught in the sprout, dropping low. Madara ends up going down to the Invoker. Sensu falls as well, and a Sun Strike will manage to clip the Sand King. It's a phenomenal display of skill coming out from Rizal on this Invoker. And Knuckleheads have simply overwhelmed Akatsuki here today. I gotta give credit to Winter Wyvern and uh, uh, Slider though. They did their best. I mean, they were the ones who opened up the fight for them. So really well done by Knuckleheads. Yep. Good stuff coming up from Knuckleheads. Akatsuki, um, I don't know. They they had some things working for them. Madara had a really hard time in the safe lane. That aggro try coming out from Knuckleheads paid dividends and um, good pushing coming out from the Knuckleheads.